Good morning. morning from Lima. We are just in Kennedy Park here in Miraflores to meet our tour group because if you've watched any of our videos or know us, you'll know that we love a free walking tour when we go somewhere new. And while the tour is not of Miraflores, we will be meeting our tour group here so we can all take the train over to the old city together. Let's check it out. The area that is now known as Lima was occupied by indigenous populations before Francisco Pizarro, on behalf of the Spanish Empire, founded the city in 1535. He designated a piece of land to build Plaza de Armas, now called Plaza Mayor, which eventually grew to include the Government Palace, Lima Metropolitan Cathedral, Archbishop's Palace of Lima, Municipal Palace, and Palacio de la Union, and become the historic heart of the city. The Spanish Empire designated the city as the capital of the Viceroyalty of Peru in 1543, and over the next century, Lima flourished. However, the city's prosperity attracted foreign invaders, which prompted the construction of the city walls between 1684 and 1687. The basilicas and convents of Santo Domingo, San Francisco, and San Agustin, as well as the Iglesia de la Merced, were all built during the 16th century in the Baroque architectural style. However, like many historic buildings in the city, these have undergone construction a handful of times following devastating earthquakes in the 17th and 18th centuries. The Peruvian War of Independence, led by General José de San Martín, involved a series of military conflicts between 1809 and 1826 that finally resulted in Peru gaining independence from the Spanish Empire. Lima entered its golden age, but after a brief period of peace, Peru once again fought for its sovereignty between 1879 and 1883 in the War of the Pacific against Chile. Following the war, much of the city was rebuilt. The House of Peruvian Literature, which is the former train station, and Teatro Colón are examples of the neoclassical architectural style that dominated in the early 20th century. Later, we are now done with our free walking tour of this part of Lima and honestly it was fascinating. I had very little foundational knowledge of Peru's history to begin with beyond the Incan Empire so getting a real sense of that because this city was at the center of a lot of it was really really interesting. Our guy Jorge was passionate, incredibly knowledgeable, and he was always happy to answer any questions about practically anything about this country. It just really, really added to the experience for us. So if you are going to be staying in Lima for a little bit of time, then make this part of your itinerary. But after three hours of walking around, we're now pretty hungry. We met some new friends, Sarah and John, on the walking tour, which is actually how we meet a lot of people. And so we're going to go for lunch with them.
sorry that we haven't checked in. We ended up spending a fair amount of time with John and Sarah, who have been absolutely lovely to get to know. And as a result of that, we really wanted to just be present with them and very much in the moment. They were understanding of us taking some YouTube footage, but I think had we taken too much advantage, then we'd have felt very bad about that. Mm -hmm. The really cool thing was we got to check out some more of Peruvian culture through their cuisine. So we ended up trying, first of all, a drink called Chicha Morada. Now, if you've seen our video from Comuna 13 in Colombia, then you'll know that we already tried a type of chicha, which was like fermented with corn and sugar, and it tasted like kombucha. Amazing. This one is not actually fermented, so it doesn't have any alcohol content, and it is made with some different ingredients altogether. So this one does have corn, but it's a purple corn, which is a very distinctive color. Mm -hmm. And then in addition to that, you have pineapple rind, cinnamon, cloves, sugar, and lemon included into it to make something which is really interesting. I think I ended up likening it to mulled wine without the grapes. Absolutely delicious that we really enjoyed it. And as far as the type of food goes, we ended up going for cheap. And this was something that our tour guide recommended to us. He was explaining to us that Peru experienced a wave of Chinese immigrants in the 19th and 20th century, and they really started to influence Peruvian food. The food that we had is kind of a mix of Cantonese and Peruvian, and he said here in Peru, they don't consider it Chinese food, so it's not like you wouldn't be getting something local and authentic to hear. Here they really do consider it Peruvian food. So he recommended to us that we go for something called arroz chaufa, which is basically like the Peruvian version of fried rice. And you can get it with shrimp, chicken, beef, duck, pork. You can get a mix of all of it, and we ended up having the one with beef in it, and it was fantastic. So that was absolutely wonderful and we have now just got back from that but it turns out that the Copa America is on, Peru are in it and they are playing their fierce rivals Chile tonight and the game kicks off in probably about an hour and a half so we're going to take some time to crack on with some work and then we're going to head out to a bar to go and watch the game. Surprisingly, all of those pubs are full and we can't get in. So we're now heading to a different area to try and see if we can watch the game from there. It took us a while, admittedly, to actually find a bar that we could sit in to watch the game, but we did end up finding one eventually, and while the game itself was pretty uneventful and ended up being a nil-nil draw with very few incidents, the times that we had with our new friends John and Sarah were absolutely wonderful, had a great conversation over a few drinks, and all in all just ended up being a wonderful evening well spent. And I think the fact that we had such a hard time finding somewhere to watch the game just proves how much fun the environment was and how seriously the Peruvian population takes the soccer game, which I think is actually the case probably in all Latin American countries. So it was a really fun environment and atmosphere to be part of. And as the tournament progresses, I actually hope to go out and experience more of it. Mm -hmm. I believe that Peru and Canada are actually in the same group. Yes. So... Hopefully we can go out and watch that game. And I mean, obviously I don't have high expectations for Canada, so it'll just be a fun match to watch. And I hope that we don't lose to Peru 10-0. Yes, agreed. Basically football is religion here. So like even getting to be in amongst that is just really cool. And being in a tournament, like even though it's not hosted in this continent right now, to be able to kind of witness it from afar and be able to still soak up the atmosphere in the countries that are participating is really neat. So yeah, all in all, this has been a lovely evening well spent and we will look forward to spending another day very well tomorrow and we'll be happy to take you along. So until next time, Take care. And keep smiling.